Hey hello guys welcome back to my channel my name is Sagar Prajapati and in this video I will be talking about one of the important question that was asked in the recent interview and I got this question from the LinkedIn post. Okay so the question saying that we have a data and uh, here we need to find out the percentage of the nulls value each column wise. Okay so if you can see we have first name we have last name we have city right. Inside this you can see over here that we are having some nulls value inside each column right so if you can you know focus on focus on this then you will see that in the first name we are having nulls we in the last name also we are having some nulls and then we are having some nulls in the city column now we need to find out the percentage so how we could do that okay perfect now what I'll do I'll try to first import the library so I will I will be using here pyspark.sql.function import call okay I'm just I'm gonna use this call method right now we need to actually you know we need to actually uh, find out the percentage of each columns right so I'll just go with for I in for i in df dot columns to get the information of the columns. So if I just print it here, you will see that we are having here the columns, right? Perfect. Now, what if now I need to find out the number total number, right? Of each column. So I can write here to total count is equal to df dot uh, select right call of what i call of i uh, call of i right and here I will count the I will do a count so I'll do like this perfect this is correct I need to find out the null value also right total null value so I can write like this df dot filter df dot filter call of what I and is null and I can go with count even though you can also use if else condition I mean uh, uh, you can use that case when condition also over here right okay now we have total count we have null value now I will use percentage so I'll go with percentage is equal to what uh, null values divide by divide by uh, total value total count and all these things I will be multiplying with 100 cool now I'll just print the answer hey very easy okay now let me show you where you can improve this solution oh this is the solution of that guy who has posted this uh, problem okay maybe he is correct okay I'm not sure whether he is correct or wrong now we are getting like this okay here what I will do now if you if you you know think that this data set is very huge very huge data set let's say you can not very huge you can also consume let's say 100 M, 100 MB 500 MB data and you know we are having a lakhs millions 10 million rows like that okay and you are having also multiple columns not only three columns you are having multiple columns now you know you know a uh, data frame is a lazy evolution or lazy evolution something like that right yeah so what happens actually when we are calling action it will when we are calling an action right aggregation or something like that it will go and do the process correct here if you can see we are here we have written df dot column so when we do this it will go and you know fetch the columns first now we are selecting the column and then we are using count so first time it will go and read the data frame second time it will go and read the data frame again right now this happens two times for each column now suppose we are having 10 columns and we are having 10 million rows so it will go and again read and read and then count read and count read and count it, it is not very good way to do but I observe maybe you have a very different way to do or you, you have a very optimized way to do to solve this problem if you have please post the solution so that I will also learn it so what I can do instead I can write here df.cache or you can use a uh, persist okay I'm I'm assuming that I'm I'm this is a job cluster 
okay and uh, yeah like this and here I will do a count now if you see this problem has been you know it took only 3.71 seconds okay no problem I'll just cache this data frame and let me run this even though I do not have a multi node cluster this is a single node cluster right and having I guess very less configuration so this is a free version okay now you can see it has been run now what I'll do I'll run this again you can see it took 2.25 seconds. Now let me run it again. 2.08 seconds. If I run this again, it took 2.13 seconds. Actually, the reason is, see, me, uh, the reason is, the reason is that we have cached the data into the executors. Okay, into the executors, we have cached the data. Means the data is stored now in the executor. Now, if if we are you know now I am I am saying hey hey data frame give me column 1 means first name so it will go it it will not actually read the whole data frame again since we have read it data frame already and is stored in the ex executor it will go and find out the data from there fetch the data from there itself and do the count likewise it will do the filtering and so and it will give the result so I am not hitting the data frame again and again means I am not reading the huge CSV file or you know uh, very uh, I mean the source file you know again and again so by this you can actually solve this problem maybe I am wrong I am not sure right if you have a better solution please uh, you know post it on the comments box or you can also post it you know in a, in, a, in a LinkedIn so that everyone will understand it what I observe that I can solve this problem via this way the optimized way maybe you can use a broadcast variable could be you can use it right apart from this apart from this this is one of the course I have launched right master in Delta Lake using Databricks with the real-time end-to-end project industry based project here you can see the module one is has covered multiple things like you know what is Delta what is Pi Spark how to write you know read write and other stuff of Delta Lake or Delta table right everything is covered in the module one it is around of three to four hours of content in module two I have told you about how you can you know fetch the data from API blob gen 2 SQL databases using Python and PySpark no tool only coding Bindas then we have validate the schema and test the source data batch processes batch process some of the sources and real-time data process learn how and when to do incremental load and full load create fact and dimensions using a star schema reduce small file issues when to use vacuum at distribute the data to stakeholders using python integrate power bi and build reports on, on top of delta lake then schedule your job with the help of workflows and you know commit your code and git they are like around 18 to 20 hours of content in this course and you know, that is not a very you know basic course if you wish you can go you know all these kind of see the question which i have solved over here these kind of tips and techniques I have used in my project okay not only just you know reading the data create a partition and other stuff no as I have just you know uh, taught you in a very deep way how when to use vacuum when not to use vacuum how we can actually reduce the small file while while writing the data into a delta lake there are two ways you know I have told you via via you know very a uh, very decent way I mean very basic way as well as we have some predefined configurations right so or modules we can use that also and incremental load when to use incremental load how you can actually automate the incremental load like there's like those kind of things I have you know discussed in this project so if you take this project I am definitely sure that you know you you gonna you gonna love it and you you won't regret to spend this much amount right so please do not waste your money i mean if you wish you can you know go there and check out the first content if you like then take it and uh, yeah and please share share this uh, course within your friends so that you know they will also understand it properly and chalo thank you bye bye we will meet you in the next lecture